Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm on On One Photo Raw 2021 and I'm editing a photo and it's it's kind of what I consider editing for impact. I want to create kind of a dramatic, impactful photo that's much more kind of, uh, I don't know, intense, dramatic, uh, impactful. I'm not sure what the word is, but much different than the one that I started with, for example. So here you go. Here's a photo that I have and I took this outside of Copenhagen. Uh, at Fredericksburg Castle, and I've done a couple of things so far. You can see that's what it started like, and that's where I am now. So a little bit of transform to straighten up the verticals. I did crop it a little bit, and I have applied a few adjustments here in the develop pane, but what I want to do is get into local adjustments and then some of the various effects and filters, and then I want to use various masks as well so I can isolate, separate areas, and basically take the photo from where it is to where I want it to be, Let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna start with a local adjustment. And the first thing I will do here is create a luminosity mask. So there you go. Let me hit uh, reset on the exposure so it's not applying anywhere yet. Or I should say, there's no uh, adjustments made. I'm just gonna create the mask first. So let me click view. I want this to be primarily for the sky. So for me, that's gonna involve moving these levels around so that I can kind of isolate that sky. And let's see here. Okay, after messing around a little bit, I ended up with that. So you can see the mask, very much an isolated sky, not 100% perfect, but honestly, that's gonna be just fine. So I'm gonna click view to get out of that and click to get out of the masking menu. And the first thing I wanna do, for me, a dramatic photo or an impactful photo has a little bit of a dramatic sky. So I'm actually gonna darken this sky a little bit. For the moment, I am gonna increase the highlights. And here I go fairly high, like uh, low 60s. Midtones are going up as well, so that is going to brighten that a little bit. And the shadows are coming down a little bit. So trying to create a little bit of difference between the brighter and the darker parts of the clouds in the skies. Maybe a little bit of that impact, not a massive amount, but that's okay. I'm also going to take the temperature down slightly, so I'm going to pull that to about a negative 20. And I would say so far, there's my sky before, and there it is current state. I like that better. It fits a little bit more with the mood that I'm looking for. I am going to go ahead and copy this mask, add another local adjustment, uh, reset that exposure, and I'm going to go ahead and paste this mask and then invert it because, yes, you guessed it, I am going to make adjustments to that foreground area. You can see that mask is working and looking quite good there. I'm actually going to adjust it just a little bit further. I think that looks pretty fantastic. I love the masking. I mean, I talk about it in all the videos I do about On One, but it's honestly just incredible. So powerful, so easy, so just capable. Really gives you massive control over the photo. So what I'm gonna do here is actually increase the, oops, i tell you what, let me show the photo again. Get out of the view of the mask mode. I'm gonna increase the exposure, not that much, maybe something like that. I am gonna add some structure. I wanna pop some of that detail in that foreground area. So I'm gonna bump up that exposure, or excuse me, that structure quite a bit. I'm gonna pull the temperature down. To me, it's just a little too much of that reddish orange. So I'm gonna pull that down a little, and I'm gonna pull the saturation down a little bit as well, but I'm gonna bump up the vibrance. So I do that a lot with saturation and vibrance where I'll generally pull saturation down, but pop up the vibrance. It helps some of those non-dominant colors pop a little bit. And I wanna just kinda you know, get the colors looking just right, but not over the top. So it's just a little bit of a, a play that I have, for lack of a better word. So here, uh, this adjustment has been for the foreground area, which is basically the man-made structure, right? This castle itself. So there it is before this local adjustment, and there it is now. I think that's looking pretty awesome. I'm gonna copy this mask, because now I'm gonna go over to effects and start having some fun here. So the first one is gonna be HDR look. And of course, I want to paste this mask. There we go. And as you know from the previous filter on local adjustment, that's what the mask looked like. And here it is applied. So you can create masks in local adjustments and then copy and apply them in effects. Works great, it's super powerful and easy. So there it is before and there it is now. Again, I'm just crunching up that detail. I am going for a little bit of a dramatic look. And I actually did dynamic contrast the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and hit paste there. And so that's adding even a little bit more of that kind of crunch. So there it is before and there it is after. But I think dynamic contrast and HDR look, they just have a slightly different impact on the photo. See that HDR look, there it is before and there it is after. So it does actually brighten the photo a little bit. The dynamic contrast adds a little bit more, I think of it as like clarity, kind of like edge contrast where it cranks up that detail a little bit, but not in the same way that HDR look does. Regardless, I've got a fairly crunchy looking foreground, which is what I was going for because again, it's kind of a dramatic photo 
And these kind of things, it's all brick, it's all stone. You know, again, we're talking just the man-made structure here. That kind of stuff to me just kind of screams, you know, hey, crunch me up a little bit. So um, I did. So I'm gonna add a filter. I'm gonna get photo filter. Here it is, they're alphabetical. I should be able to find it. I'm gonna paste the mask, so paste. And of course, I'm gonna invert because I don't want a blue foreground. So if you view the mask, there it is. Looks honestly just fantastic. Collapse the masking window, and I need to get my numbers straight here. That 240 is right. The amount is way too much. I'm going to do about a 7, and I've done this in several other videos where I just kind of create a little bit of a bluer look in the sky simply because I like it. I just think of cloudy skies as um, looking a little bit better if they have a little bit of blue in them, so I'm going, to, I'm going to actually move that down a little bit to about a 6. But there it is before, and there it is after. Just a tinge of blue in the sky. I just think that adds a little bit. Now, while I've got this mask, I'm going to click copy and I'm going to go get dynamic contrast again. And I'm going to paste this mask, paste. And this is me just kind of smoothing out the sky. So I just tend to come over here and do something like a negative 30, a negative 40, something like that. But again, it's applying just to the sky because I'm reusing that same mask. I don't know how well you can tell, but there it is before and there it is after slightly smoother. The only thing I would say here is depending on how dramatic or impactful you want the photo to be or how moody, you may not want to do that move because it does kind of smooth out the skies. Now clouds like this can be dramatic even if they're kind of smooth, but it's just something to think about, you know, season to taste. I tend to like a little bit smoother skies even in, dr in a dramatic photo, but when you have skies like that, you can crunch them up. You could actually just use dynamic contrast going the other direction. The only thing to be aware of there is it does create a little bit of grain and kind of crunch in those clouds, which adds to the drama, but to me it looks a little bit noisy. So again, it's all just personal preference. Just kind of play around until you find the look that works for you. Uh, and now I'm going to go get Tone Enhancer, and here I'm going to take the exposure down slightly. I'm going to increase the contrast, and these uh, edits here on Tone Enhancer are going to be global in nature, meaning they're going to impact the entire photo. So a slight reduction in highlights and a slight reduction in shadows as well. I'm just creating, kind of massaging the light a little bit. I felt like it was a little bit bright. There it is before, and there it is now. So getting a little bit more moody. Contrast always helps, because for me, higher contrast photos tend to be a little bit moodier. When they're really flat and not very much contrast, I just don't find those particularly uh, moody at all. And again, this is kind of a moody, I said impactful, dramatic, you know, whatever you want to call it, but that's the kind of look I'm going for. I'm now into LUTs, and I chose this one called Comfort. It's in the color grading category. I just kind of like that. I thought it looked pretty cool, but it's a little too much, so I'm actually going to create another luminosity mask here. And if you click View, that's what the traditional standard luminosity mask is going to do. It's going to apply, you know, again, based on light values. That's how luminosity masks work. In this case, I'm going to leave it like that because it's going to apply more so in the sky and less so in the foreground, but as you can see, it does apply some in the foreground. I kind of like that. I think it looks nice here. So let me turn this off. There it is before that LUT, and there it is after. It's pretty subtle, but I like the look of it. And then I'm just gonna wrap this up with a vignette. I think vignettes look really good when you're kind of creating a little bit of a dramatic photo. I went with this big softy. So brightness is negative 100. Size, I'm actually gonna increase a little bit to mid 40s. And I'm gonna take the roundness to uh, a little bit closer to zero, so like a negative seven, negative eight. And I am gonna place the center, which you can do with this little button here. So I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna place the center down here. And there we go. That creates a little bit more of that mood in the sky because it's the, the vignette is centered further to the bottom of the photo. So if I turn that off, there it is before and there it is after. If it's a little too much, of course, you can increase the brightness a little bit, maybe pull down the size or increase the size if you'd like to, and of course, adjust the sh size and shape as is uh, you know normal with the vignette. And of course, with that ability to place the center, I think comes in really handy. So let me show you the vignette. There it is before and there it is after. Let me show you what this photo started like because as I said, I'm really looking to edit for impact or create a little bit of an impactful dramatic photo where you look at it and say, wow, that's kind of dramatic. And I feel like we've achieved that. If you look at the before, it was much more yellow and kind of muted, uh, kind of dark, obviously, as is the case with a lot of raw files. You know, the details don't look that great. The colors don't look that great. I mean, raw files need to be adjusted. That's just what they're all about. And so if you do the full before and after, tilting back, shot with a little bit wider angle lens and needed to be adjusted with the transform tool, which I did. 
and then creating all these different masks and using these tools like the local adjustments as well as the various effects filters allowed me to create this dramatic photo. So one more time, there it is before and there it is after. And those are some of the tools that I use and some of the things that I think about when I'm creating kind of an impactful, dramatic, moody, you know, pick the word that applies to you. But that's the kind of photo I wanted to create. And I felt like these scenes do a really great job where you have some structure that you can play with, like these man-made surfaces, all the bricks, some of the metal work, that sort of thing. I think the lines work. We have lines kind of converging on that arch down there at the end. And of course, you have a little bit of a moody sky, clouds, that sort of thing. All these elements come together to help you really create kind of a moody look. And that's how I did it, my friends. I hope it gives you some ideas, maybe inspires you to try some of these tools on your own photos. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with another video. Until then, my friends, take care of yourselves. I'll see you then. Take care and adios.